Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Frosty Gaming and I've got another Unity tutorial for you. This is going to be on lighting. Now, this is just going to be basic lighting. I'm not going to do a whole lot, but I'm going to explain each light that you can put in your scene and the different properties that you can edit. Alright, so we have a single cube here. Not a big deal, but if we press play, right, it's just this gray box. So doesn't really do much for us, can't really see much, and this doesn't look like a game. You know, not at all. It doesn't even look like a, a box, really. It looks like this black square, like something has been cut out of the blue. So we want to put some lights in there. So if we go to Game Object, Create Other, you've got these four lights. So I'm going to explain these to the best of my ability. So first, Directional Light. The concept of a directional light is kind of hard to understand for people that haven't dealt with it before. So the actual definition of a directional light is a light source with parallel light rays that do not diminish with distance. It gives you this little object for a directional light, but it doesn't actually... This object doesn't actually mean much. Now we're on the translate tool right now, right? And it doesn't matter where we move this the lighting on the cube isn't changing nothing's happening I could move it below the cube it doesn't matter because this object moving it around does nothing to this light it's the angle of the light that we're worried about this is a global light so it doesn't actually come from a point it comes from one direction that's why it's called a directional light so if we want to change the rotation you can kinda of see where the lights falling you can think of it almost as like a sky right the lights coming from the sky so it doesn't really matter where you put it because the sky is always above you it doesn't matter now that's not necessarily the case with a directional light you could actually rotate it all the way upside down so that the light is coming from the bottom but the rotation is all that matters it doesn't matter where you put it in your scene so if you want to get it just right you can tweak with it a little bit but now you see we've got this light coming in from the right and that directional light gives us this cube this just this plain cube directional lights help light up your entire scene so everything in your scene you can go in and specifically say that you don't want it to affect some objects but for the most part you're just going to want to have a directional light and then let it fall on every object and light up your scene okay now let's look at the component the light component on this object so we've got the type right and it's directional and so you can put a light in your scene a certain light and then you can change it all you want you can change the color of the light if you want it to be like a red light or a black light like if that's the color that you want to shine off then you can do that white is usually what I go with because it looks the most natural but if you want to get deep into advanced lighting I'll do a tutorial on that later one thing that's going to be interesting for you to mess with is the intensity so you can kind of see it's getting darker as I bring it down and it's getting a lot brighter as I bring it up we usually want something in the middle. 0.5 is where it starts. So directional lights have this special attribute cookie and cookie size. A cookie is a texture, right? You're gonna put a texture in there. It's an alpha channel of the texture and it's used as a mask to determine how bright the light is in different places. So since this directional light hits everything, you can put a texture in there so that it dims the light in certain places if you want this is really good for big environments if you, and the cookie size scales the projection of a cookie if you ever use these you can get more into detail but that's all I'm going to say about those right now shadows all of these are only available in the pro version so I'm not going to go over them right now I will probably go over them in the advanced lighting tutorial 
There's also this draw halo option, which means this will draw a halo around the range of the light. If you want a flare to be rendered uh, at the light's position, you can put a flare in there. Render mode will tell you about the importance of the light, if it's needed or not for performance and stuff. Culling mask is used to selectively exclude groups or of objects from being affected by the light. Light mapping is kind of how textures use lighting. So textures and objects, you can do real time only or baked only, which means like if you wanted the texture to have the light baked on it to help with performance, then you could do that. That's pretty much all there is for directional light. The things you're going to be worrying about mostly are the color, the intensity, and that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to talk about a spotlight. As you can imagine, it's kind of like a flashlight. If you'd imagine of how a flashlight works. Light comes out of this one end and it gets bigger as it goes. So we're going to just go ahead and rotate it and bring it down closer. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, so this is a spotlight. Spotlight has a lot of the same attributes and properties that a directional light has, but the things that you're mostly going to be worried about are range, spot angle, and color and intensity. So this range is different from a directional light. You can change how far it goes. So if we look at the side there, you can see it's going further and the light's getting brighter because it's closer to the light now. You can also change the angle, so how wide it goes. The color and the intensity, of course. The spotlight is something you would use if you wanted to replicate like a flashlight. If your uh, character was first person, you had a flashlight. Third person, you had a flashlight, you used the spotlight. Some other things like lamps and uh, other lighting structures would use spotlights. All the rest of these are the same, so I'm not really going to go back over them. Next I'm going to talk about a point light. Now as you can see, this is like a sphere, right? And the light's being shown from this point onto the cube. And that's because this point light is pretty much a point of light. It spreads out from this point in all directions for 20 units in unity. We can bring that down or up, but this range is also used for the point lights. Color and intensity are the same. Point lights good for lights as well. Um, for like uh, wall mounted lights, lamps, stuff like that. It just uh, it depends on what you want to use, whether you want to use a spotlight or a point light kind of thing. Now, area lights are only available in Unity Pro, and that's similar to what I was talking about with the light mapping, so I'm not going to go into that. But you can also, without uh, editing the range, you can click on the center and mess with it that way, or you can click on the edge and mess with that that way. Or you can just rotate it, but scaling doesn't work, because the range you have to change by editing those vertices. You can move it around and rotate it all you want. Same thing goes with a point light. You can use these vertices to change the range and this to change the intensity and the color. Alright, I think that's about it for basic lighting in Unity. I hope you learned something and if you enjoyed it, you know, check out my other videos. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.